What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitching Ninja's Filthiest Pitches of the Day. Remember, before we get to those pitches, hit that subscribe button. Join Ninja Nation. Be a part of the biggest and best daily baseball show on YouTube. And now, without further ado, here are my filthiest pitches of the day. I'm going to start with J.P. France, who had four Ks in six innings, giving up three runs. He had this fastball, these change-ups, as well as this curveball. He faced Chase Anderson, who had three Ks in four innings, giving up five runs, and had this nasty sweeper. Graham Ashcraft had two Ks in six innings, giving up one run and had this slider. And he faced Josiah Gray, who had six Ks in five innings, giving up three earned runs, and had this sweeper for a sword. Eduardo Rodriguez made his return and had seven Ks in four innings, but gave up five runs and had this painted two-seamer, this changeup, as well as these sliders. He faced Austin Pruitt, who only had one K in three innings and gave up no runs or hits and had this bend-the-knee curveball. Brian Bayo had three Ks in seven innings, giving up two runs and had these filthy change-ups. And he battled John Gray, who had two Ks in six innings, gave up three earned runs and had this slider. Michael Soroka had four Ks in four and two-thirds scoreless innings. He really battled this game because I didn't think he was all that sharp. But then you look up, and he didn't give up any runs. And got Ks on his fastball and changeup. Justin Steele had five Ks in six innings, giving up three earned runs, and had these sliders. He faced Adrian Hauser, who had four Ks in five innings, giving up one earned run, and had this elevated fastball and painted sinker. Ty Walker had 8 Ks in 7 innings, giving up 4 runs, and had this fastball, this 2-seamer, curveball, cutter, and nasty splitters. Walker seems to be increasing his Ks recently, and his stuff is pretty nasty. He faced Zach Littell, who had 2 Ks in 2 innings, giving up 2 runs, and the Ks both came at fastballs at the knees. Dean Kramer had 10 Ks in 7 innings, giving up 1 earned run, had these 2-seamers, including this backdoor 2-seamer, as well as these change-ups and cutters. He faced Randy Vasquez, who only had 1K in 5 scoreless innings, and that K came on this change-up. Seth Lugo was really solid with 6Ks in 6 innings, giving up only one earned run. He had this fastball, change-up, and of course his curveball, and this curveball was 3,420 RPMs. A real buzzsaw. Look how fast that thing drops. And in the slow-mo of the pitch, you can really see how Lugo gets his fingers to the front of the baseball to cause that top spin, which makes the ball drop so fast. That was definitely one of the filthiest pitches of the night. And he faced Patrick Sandoval, who had 5 Ks in 5 innings, giving up one earned run, and had these filthy change-ups. Alex Cobb had 7 Ks in 6 scoreless innings. He had these wicked two-seamers, including this one that ran 17 inches through the back door. He also had dirty knuckle curves, including this knuckle curve that got the sword, as well as these splitters. Osvaldo Bito had four Ks in four innings, giving up two runs and had these fastballs. And he faced Bobby Miller, who had seven Ks in five and two-thirds innings, giving up four hits and had this absolute flames. In the first inning, he had Ks on 101 and 200 mile an hour fastballs. According to Codify Baseball, in the StatCast era, no Dodgers starting pitcher had more than 700 mile an hour fastballs in the first inning, and Miller had 10. Alec Marsh had 5 Ks in 5 innings, giving up two earned runs, and had this fastball, curveball, and slider. And he battled yesterday's co filthiest starting pitcher of the day, Pablo Lopez. Lopez had a 12 K shutout, giving up only four hits. His command was off the charts yesterday. He threw 100 pitches, and 76 were strikes which, quick math, is a 76% strike percentage. I'm morphing to Math Ninja right before your eyes. Lopez relied on his fastball command to set up his change-ups, curveballs, and sweepers, and I really like his curveball this year. He seems to be using it more, and it is filthy. Just a great game by Pablo Lopez. Tommy Henry had two Ks in six innings, giving up no runs and only two hits, and had this slider. And he faced off against yesterday's other co-filthiest starting pitcher of the day, Kodai Senga. Senga had 12 Ks in 8 innings, giving up only 4 hits and 1 run, and that run was on a solo homer. He had a great mix of fastballs and ghost forks this game. Senga had this 99 mile an hour fastball, and he liked it so much he gave himself a round of applause. Much deserved. 
Senga picked up several backwards Ks on his fastballs, and I'll touch on why in just a little bit. He also got a K on this painted sweeper, and his ghost forks were a combination of beautiful and disgusting, as well as disappearing, like a ghost. Look how beautiful this ghost fork is in slow motion. It's just a very pretty pitch when you slow it down, and you can really see how wide he spreads his fingers, which kills the spin and is one reason why these ghost forks fall off the table. Talking about falling off the table, look at this one that gets a swing and miss, bounces all the way to the backstop, and somehow Alvarez makes this play on that drop third strike. That pitch was filthy, but Alvarez's throw is ridiculous. As I mentioned, Senga was able to get a bunch of backward Ks on his fastball. The reason hitters were taking his fastball was because he had the reputation of finishing hitters off with his ghost fork. So in the back of the hitter's mind, they're thinking, here comes the ghost fork, and it ends up being a fastball. Here's an overlay of Senga's ghost fork for a ball, and then a fastball in the zone for a backwards K. You can see why as a hitter, after you took that ghost fork that ended up low, and you see a fastball in that same plane, your mind gets confused. You think it's probably another ghost fork, and because you have such a short time to make a decision, you end up taking the fastball for the K. Amazingly, Seng is also able to tunnel his ghost fork with an elevated fastball. And you can see how that ghost fork absolutely drops off the table. It starts out looking like that fastball that got that swing and miss and ends up in the dirt. This shows you just how amazing the drop is on that ghost fork. And why Senga has almost a 59% whiff rate on that pitch this season. And because you're subscribed to this channel, here's Kodai Senga's ghost fork grip from my interview with him. Let's see the, uh, the ghost fork grip. So thumb to the side. You're... On the side. Now on to my filthiest relievers. Brian Abreu had this fastball and slider. David Robertson had this dirty knuckle curve. Ken Waldachuk had this back foot slider. Camilo Duvall had this overpowering heater. Adbert Alzali had this diesel. Jeff Hoffman had this dirty splitter and fastball. Tanner Scott had these wicked high velo sliders. Michael Tonkin had this vicious back foot slider. Look at that thing go. Daniel Hudson had these six sliders. Ryan Presley had this 3,357 RPM curveball as well as this slider. And my filthiest reliever of the day yesterday was the mountain, Felix Bautista, with this 102 and 101 mile an hour heat. And now, my Pitching Ninja moment of zen. It was Shohei's birthday yesterday, so I decided to make him a nice little birthday video. It's the least I can do for all the content he's given me. What is up, everybody? My picks of the day today are a three-leg parlay. I'm going to start out with Kyle Bradish for 6Ks or more, then take Ayuri Perez for 6Ks or more, and top it off with Tanner Bybee for 7Ks or more. What would your picks of the day be? 